let's talk about orbital notation. Now, before we can actually do some examples with orbital notation, I need to give you three rules to write orbital notation. Now, just a reminder, or orbital notation is an extension of electron configuration. It's a more visual, pictorial picture of where the electrons are placed relative to the nucleus. Uh, so here are the three rules. The first one is called the Aufbau Principle. Now that's a German term for building up, and that will help you remember it. Uh, the Aufbau Principle tells us that electrons always fill the lowest energy level first. So let me give you an example. I have nitrogen right here. You know that nitrogen has seven valence, or seven electrons, excuse me, um, and uh, those electrons will always fill the lowest energy, and once that energy level is filled, it moves up. Um, it's following the periodic table. So those electrons fill the energy level of the subshell, uh, then it will go to the next energy level, the next subshell. And so for our nitrogen, my seven electrons would look like this. One, two, in the, that would be my 1s2, and then 2s2 would be my two electrons here, and then I have a 2p3. One, two, three. They will go in the 2p right there. This is what will not happen. So for ground state, we would never have an electron move up here. I would never have a 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, 3s1. We have to completely fill that 2p. We have to get to 2p6 before any electrons will go into the 3s. So you always fill the lowest energy levels. Once all of those um, energy levels, subshells, and orbitals are filled, then it moves on to the next one. So let's erase this, make sure that it looks correct. Okay. So always fill the lowest energy level in subshell. Follow the periodic table. Okay, second one. This is called Hund's rule. Hund's rule tells us that electrons will fill orbitals individually in a subshell, and once every orbital has one electron, then it goes back and doubles up. So I am very methodical when I do my orbital notation that I'll put one electron in each orbital for that subshell, and then I go back and I double up. Um, so let's use oxygen as the example. Oxygen is a 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So we've got two electrons. Notice I use the arrows for my electrons. Um, I have two electrons for the s, two electrons um, in the 2s, and now the 2p. I've got four electrons, so watch how I do this. We put one electron in each orbital. There's one, two, three, and then I go back and double up. Um, is stability, uh, almost everything can be explained in chemistry by stability. Electrons are going to be more stable being by themselves in one orbital um, than being together with the two electrons, and more stable having an electron in each orbital than two in one orbital and, and not um, others in the other, electrons in the other orbitals. So there's Hund's rule. Um, I give my students this little reminder. Think about getting on a bus. When you get on a bus, watch people. Everybody will take their own seat. As soon as every seat has at least one person in it, then people will begin to double up and you'll have two people uh, per, per school bus. At least this is for school buses. Um, okay, the last one, the Pauli exclusion principle. Now this has a very technical definition, um, something that actually fits into physical chemistry, uh, P-chem, quantum mechanics. I'm going to give you the official uh, definition, but then I'm going to give you the really practical, kind of dirty application for it. So here's your official definition. Each electron has a unique set of four quantum numbers. And I know that sounds like totally gobbledygook. Um, here's the application. In an orbital, one electron spins up and one electron spins down. Think about this for a second with me. We've got our orbital. Let's say that we're on the y-axis and we're on the for our p dumbbell. We've got two electrons there, two negatives. If I have two negative magnets, what do they do? They repel. So we have to keep two electrons, two negative charges in this same orbital. The way they do this is one spins up, one spins down. They create different opposite magnetic fields so they don't repel one another. Um, the way we represent this is those arrows. So one spinning up, one spinning down. Notice on my arrows, I am really lazy. I don't do a complete arrow really pretty like that. I do little half arrows um, just to go fast. Um, now, if you're in a class where you are learning about quantum numbers, just a little reminder, your principal number, that's your energy level, that's one. The azimuthal, that's your L, that's the, um, the block, the subshell, so your S or your P. Um, 
the magnetic quantum number, that's going to be which orbital inside of the um, energy level and subshell. Um, so I could look at these two electrons right here. They have the same energy level, same principal quantum number. They have the same block, that's the same azimuthal number, that's the L. The same magnetic number, that's your M sub L. Um, and so the only thing to differentiate them at this point, their location is their spin. One would be um, a plus one half and one would be a minus one half. And, and that's your spin, the M sub one half. So those are the four quantum numbers. It's energy level, block, orbital, and then spin, and then spin. And then every electron has its very own um, address, if you will, has its own set of four quantum numbers. Practicality, when you write electrons in an orbital, just do one up, one down. You will never have something like this, two up or two down, never, because then they'll repel each other and they won't exist in the same orbital. Okay, nice. Orbital notation rules. Good work.